everybody! So in celebration of our June Libraries of Wonder box, I wanted to come to you with a recommendations video. Now I have seven books I want to recommend to you based on their really cool libraries in them. These are all books that I absolutely love, so let's just get into it. So first up, I want to talk about a book that is a recent new favorite of mine, and that is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. Um, in this book, the library is called The Anthenaeum, and every single book in this library is a book that has been previously destroyed. So this is like a library for dead books full of information that people don't want out there. Um, it is um, inhabited by things called bookworms, which sounds very innocent, but if you try to um, tamper with this library at all, these bookworms were, are gonna come for you and they are not so kind. It has a chronicler in it who takes care of the library named Alias and it is kind of his never-ending job to try to keep this library organized. Um, it's just a really cool setting in Nevernight. If you didn't know, Nevernight is about a girl named Mia Corvera and as a young child her uh, father was hung and her mother was taken away from her um, and she has her sight set on revenge so she joins the Red Church which is basically training for assassins. It's a definitely an adult novel, it's super dark and bloody and gory but I just absolutely fell in love with it and the library inside isn't bad either. And next up I have Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon. Um, this is a historical fiction book set in post-World War II Barcelona and it follows a young boy named Daniel and his father takes him to the Cemetery of Forgotten Books which kind of similar to Nevernight is um, basically a library full of books that the rest of the world have forgotten that it that they've forgotten their existence um, and all of these books want one person to discover them again and for them to be special to this one person's life. Daniel ends up finding a book called The Shadow of the Wind um, and it is by an author called Julian Carax and Daniel just absolutely falls in this love and he makes it his mission to find out all of the other works that Carax um, has ever written and he discovers a kind of mystery that it seems like all of Carax's previous works are being systematically destroyed. Um, it is just such a fantastic story. Um, it has this like gritty Barcelona setting of the historical fiction, um, but there's magic and murder and secrets and uh, I just absolutely fell in love with it. It's fantastic. The third book or book series I want to talk about is Ink and Bone by Rachel Kane. Um, this is a book I think is really underrated and a series that I still need to finish. The premise of this book is that the Library of Alexandria was never destroyed and now the Great Library um, is this is the controller of the uh, flow of information for the entire world. Um, in this book, uh, owning physical books is illegal, and our main character Jess and his family are part of the black market in which they um, smuggle actual physical books. Um, his family forces him to join the library to train to become a librarian, um, and Jess is kind of conflicted the, about this because on one hand he respects the Great Library, but on the other hand he's there to gain secrets as an inside source for his family. Um, so the library is like much more than just a library in this book. I think all libraries are much more than just libraries, but um, it is like a character and an organization unto itself. This book is fast-paced and fun. It has a really great diverse cast of characters. There's kind of like a competition aspect to it. It was just a really great great story about a boy who loves books. Next up I have Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore by Robin Sloan. Technically the library in this book is a bookstore but characters in this novel do ch borrow books from the bookstore. They don't always buy them. So I'm gonna count it because I just absolutely love this book. I know I've talked about it several times in this channel but I think it deserves another mention. Um, our main character in this book is a man called Clay and it is um, set in like the early um, the mid-2000s recession that happened so um, his tech job isn't working out right now so he takes a job at Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore and he discovers that they're like clockwork people come in and check out these indecipherable books, like these books that seem to him to be written in code. So he takes it upon himself and some of his friends to try to figure out, um, to try to decipher what these books are and who is borrowing them and what the pro purpose of this is. And it ends up um, taking him on kind of like a quest. Um, this book has so much in it, but I will just say it's one of the books that I've read that just feels like a love letter 
to books. Um, it celebrates books in all forms. It celebrates print books and ebooks and audiobooks. It um, talks about like playing RPG games and video games and like even things like typography and it was just just loved it. There's a lot going on in here. There's secret societies and uh, it's just it's just wonderful. Um, I just can't recommend it enough and I think that's all I'm gonna say about it. And now my penultimate recommendation is one I'm currently reading and I actually am um, not done yet but I'm just so in love with it and I know it's gonna be a new favorite and that is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo and yes my friends there is a library in here. So as a brief explanation about what this book is about it is an adult novel set in secret societies at Yale. Our main character Alex um, has kind of been hand selected for her abilities to join the secret society called Les um, and one of their ha safe havens is called Il Montang. I believe I'm saying that right, I apologize. I haven't heard anybody else talk about this book before. Um, but in this safe house, there is a library. Um, it's a really cool library. The house itself is almost like the librarian. You have to ask it very specifically what you want, and then it will adjust the room to be exactly what you need. So you have to be very specific in your requests. Um, it's very cool and things can go wrong if you ask for the wrong thing or say something you don't quite mean. Um, it is a fantastic, fantastic book. There's so much more going on in this than that small detail about the library. That is like literally a small mention but it was just so cool and uh, this book is fantastic. I know it doesn't come out, out till October and I know of you, a lot of you are going to want to get your hands on a copy and I highly recommend it. Um, will say, I do want to say it is a very adult novel. It's very unlike any of Leigh Bardugo's other books, but I am thoroughly enjoying it. And I feel like this recommendations video wouldn't be complete until I talked about Harry Potter. I feel like we spend so much time in the library at Hogwarts as we go through this series and it ends up becoming just such a pivotal an important part of the castle. Um, so many important scenes and rele elevations happen within the library and I don't think I'm gonna say too much more about it other than I feel like I partially grew up in the Hogwarts library along with Harry and a video about fictional libraries wouldn't be complete without a little mention of it. Alright so those are just a few of my books that feature some fictional libraries in celebration of our Libraries of Wonder box. Um, let me know if you have any other books with fictional libraries that you love um, in the comments down below. It is something that I love to see in books and will absolutely read more of them. I cannot wait to read our June book. Um, if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe for more videos every week. Happy reading and thanks for being awesome. Bye!